We're on the banks of the Tennessee River, the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, and trust me, through the raindrops, that is the Tennessee River. We're inside Neyland Stadium where a series gets renewed that started way back in 1892. Tennessee and Vanderbilt on senior day. Guys like Daniel Petula, who's trying to lead this team in tackles for the third consecutive year, coming out through the tee. And Jawan Jennings, who just two years ago was actually kicked off this team, but Coach Pruitt brought him back, and boy, what a fantastic career he has had over the last two seasons. Tennessee, though, trying to stop the machine that Vanderbilt has been. They have won five of the last seven in this series, including three straight. You got to go back to 2016 when Vandy upset 17th ranked Tennessee 45-35. Vandy scored 21 unanswered to end that game. Then in 2017, Vandy just whipped Tennessee 42-24 to cap the Vols dismal season. Ralph Webb ended his career as Vanderbilt's all-time leading rusher and the sixth leading rusher in the conference. Then last year, it was all about Kyle Shermer. 31 of 35 throwing the football as Vanderbilt dominated that one as well. Dave Neal alongside my partner, DJ Shockley, the former University of Georgia quarterback, led him to an SEC championship. And well, it's certainly a wet day here in Knoxville, but this is a rivalry and it's only a rivalry of two teams can participate. <laughs> yeah. Luckily for us, Vanderbilt has been involved. Five of the last seven have gone their way, and this is a big one now for Tennessee. It is, and they're trying to change the tide of that. You think about it, there's some seniors on this team who have never beaten Vanderbilt. That's a big point of emphasis for Jeremy Pruitt is we got to send these seniors out on the right note, and this rivalry game matters just as much as any. Well, he's not a senior, but a guy that's really led Tennessee here of late, and a great story in the fact that he lost his job and now has gotten it back as the quarterback, Jarrett Garantano, and it has been a roller coaster season, but he is certainly finishing on a high note. Oh, he is. He's playing at an incredible level, and the resiliency that he has shown, I have really enjoyed to watch this this past season, and now you talk about some things he's done well in the ball game. This is a skinny post, and the thing you like is his rhythm, his eyes. He does a very good job of watching this middle linebacker. He throws the football on rhythm, but the ball placement is most important. Holding that, that linebacker right in his spot and putting his football right on the back shoulder. Easy completion there on, on a big third down. That's first zone. Here's first man. The guy in the middle is the robber. He has to control him with his eyes and throw this backside in cut. And this is another deep long third down and he delivers a strike. He continues to be accurate and take care of the football is the number one attribute that he's done really well over this win streak. Boy, if he keeps playing like he's played the last couple of weeks, it'll be hard for anybody to stop Jarrett Garantano here today and in their bowl game as well. Well, it is an emotional day down on the field and not necessarily emotional for Dawn. Maybe it is. I don't know. Final regular season game. I don't know. But Dawn, it is for you guys, especially Jawan Jennings. Yeah, the senior wideout, this one is special despite the rain for him. Just two years ago, he was kicked off this team out of the program. And when head coach Jeremy Pruitt was hired, he went to some of his teammates and asked them what they thought about reinstating Jawan Jennings. It was guys like Trey Smith that stood up and fought for him. And coach said he has been the best teammate he's ever seen. I talked to Jawan this week. He described his time here as an emotional journey, one that has left nothing but a smile on his face. Guys, he was so grateful for his teammates that had his back and this fan base. Their unwavering support, he said, was everything to him. They're hoping they can pay that fan base back with another win here in Neyland. Thanks, Don. Bandy wins the toss. They defer, so Tennessee will have it first, and we are underway. Well, Jarrett Garantano, what a season. He starts the first four games, including that loss to Georgia State in the opener. Balls got off to a one and three start under him, and then he was a backup the next six games, but played in those games and played pretty well, especially of late. Then gets the start last week and threw a career high 415 yards through the air as the Vols become bowl eligible. They went on the road at Missouri, and now talking to Coach Jeremy Pruitt, he never doubted this man's confidence. It just was some things going on behind the scenes, decision making, decision making that uh, affected his performance. The team maybe got a little down on him as a quarterback, but he never lost his confidence. He Austin just poked the tight end. False start pops up in a hurry. And Dave, you can't say enough about can't say enough about what Jared's done in this time. You're talking about losing your job, a guy who's played so much football here for Tennessee now have an opportunity to be the guy again and has really stepped up to the plate. He's going to graduate in December, so this guy wants to go out on a high note. He still has another year, but this is a big time ball game that he must come out and play well. 
Jordan in at tail back. He'll get the first handoff here coming near side, and he'll be stopped at the 25-yard line. Got those five yards back. Dimitri Moore with the stop along with Alan George. And look at the quote from Derek Garantano, and he's put his mind, heart, soul into this. He loves Knoxville. Says he is a Tennessee ball, and boy, the emotions came out post game last week against Missouri. Uh, tears coming down, and you know it's hard not to root for a guy who has over, had to overcome so much in this one season. Really, since he got here, he's been under the microscope. Yeah, he's been scrutinized a lot because you, you talk about a few years back when he was the face of this program and playing really well, and he was hit a lot, but he was tough. He was one of those kind of quarterbacks that you kind of lean your hat on. And Pruitt said, this is a guy I believe could win a championship with. So there were a lot of expectations that came with that. Third down and 10. Garantano, clean pocket. That one is picked off. It is intercepted by Vanderbilt. The freshman Jalen Mahoney comes up with the interception and Vandy is in business at the 31 yard line. And this is a matchup they talked about they wanted to have and you see the number one thing they get their hands on these receivers. These are big physical receivers and you talk about just fighting back to the football. Watch him get his hands on him from the snap. Holds on a little bit longer than he's supposed to but watch him fight back to the ball and the ball is actually inside. Not sure if he's going to come more back to the quarterback or throw it outside, but either way, that's a really good play here early for Vandy. Keon Brooks in it running back. They'll throw it, though, and that one is off the fingertips. Looking for Ben Bresnahan, who is going to try to fill that void left by Jared Pinckney again. Jared Pinckney, considered one of the best tight ends in the country coming into the season. Hadn't had a banner year, but he is out for this game. Got hurt in practice this week. Yeah, you see right wrist injury and Don actually saw he was at practice earlier this week and saw it happen. And he was such a big callus to what they were doing last week. He scored a couple touchdowns, but without him today, so Bresnan's going to get the opportunity to get more catches in this ball game. They'll go with Brooks. Try to get the edge on the outside, and he'll pick up seven. He'll be about three yards shy of the line to gain. Let's go down to Don. Yeah, guys, you mentioned the Jared Pinkney injury. It happened on Tuesday during practice. I saw it. It was just a routine catch. He went down to the ground to catch the ball. That's how he hurt that wrist. It's something he's been dealing with actually all season long. I talked to him before the game. He said he really wanted to play. This is such an important game to him to be able to beat Tennessee four years straight. But he said he felt like he couldn't give the team what they needed if he played today. Well, they could use him right here on the third down and short high snap. They'll pitch it to Brooks. He's trying to get those three yards, and I don't think he got it. He may have gotten a yard. He needed three. Toa Toa coming up, the true freshman linebacker. These coaches love number 11 in orange. Yeah, Harry Toa Toa makes the play, but to watch on the outside, he does a great job of pushing this football back inside is Alante Taylor. Right on the outside, push the ball back inside, and what a wonderful job of running to the football for Tennessee, forcing the field goal. Riley Gay to attempt a 41-yarder. Gay on the year, 8 out of 10. His long 48 came against Purdue. Good clean snap. Kick is on the way. It's got plenty of legs, and Vanderbilt will get on the board first after the interception. But a drive that may have cost Vanderbilt their all-world tailback Keyshawn Vaughn who is still in the injury tent. Thank you, Dart. Here it's 3-0. Vanderbilt takes the gift of an interception and Riley Gay makes the 41-yard field goal. Pearson Cook will kick it away for the Commodores. First one was a touchback and this one will scoot into the end zone as well. Time to take a look at which players are kind of a big deal in today's game. Brought to you by Old Trapper. DJ, break this down for us. Yeah, there are a couple guys this ball game you want to look after. Jawan Jennings in the matchup with Jalen Mahoney. This is going to be critical because they're going to both be on the inside. And Jawan Jennings with the big game last week. That's kind of his comfort zone. So watch this matchup today, which should be a really big deal. Mahoney had the interception just a moment ago. His first of the year for the true freshman out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Two tight end set, Garantano 
Completed 23 passes last week. Big hole up the middle. Tim Jordan on that carry will pick up nine. Last week, first time in the history of Tennessee football, they had three guys with 100 plus yards receiving. Jennings, Palmer, Callaway, all getting it done. But so far, goose eggs for the boys. A lot of big time play receivers on the outside, but it all starts with number two. He's got to find a way to give him the football accurately for one. Run it again and have the first down. They go with Tim Jordan. Dimitri Moore making the tackle, a gain of six. So two carries and 15 yards for number nine. Jordan on the year, 93 carries now. Up over 400 yards and one rushing touchdown. Led the team with 74 yards on the ground last week against Missouri. Corner pressure pays off for Vanderbilt. Loss of two on the play as Jordan is swallowed up right away. Yeah, we saw in the first three or four plays there, Jim Chaney changed what he was going to do. He came out of two tight ends and ran the football four straight times to just calm this offense down and try to get a couple first downs. And now he brings more receivers on the field, but there was a definite determination to run the football as they started that series. Deshaun Jerkins. Return last week from injury. They love his output when he's been on the field. Gain of five there for Jordan. Set up a third down and five. This is a Tennessee offense on third down this season. It's around 43%, which is third in the SEC. So they've done a good job of completing balls on third down. And you see what he did last week. Really good when we talked about it in the open. Both plays were on third down. Here's another opportunity for him to win on third down. It looks like Vandy's playing man coverage. Tennessee 43% on third downs this year. They'll convert their first one this afternoon as the catch is made by Jawan Jennings, a gain of six. And here's the matchup we talked about. Jawan Jennings versus Mahoney on the outside. They take away the inside, and you see the slant. And this is what a big body receiver can do. Watch him just get his body in front of him and just shield the throw. And Mahoney's trying to go around him, but just a big body guy, Jawan Jennings, makes that play. And that's a momentum thing that can get going for this offense for Garantano as well as for these receivers. 56 catches on the year now for Jawan Jennings. Jordan to the left side. He is met there by three, four white jerseys. Gets a yard. Rutger Reichmeyer leading the way back there along with Tay Daly. And watch all these white jerseys get to the football here. Tay Daly coming around his second here. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six guys around the football right now. This is what it takes in the run game to be more aggressive is you got to have more hats flying around. He'll stay on the ground, a huge hole. Eric Gray in the open field. The true freshman with a foot race. He will break the tape. 56 yards and Tennessee is on the board. The three-time Tennessee Mr. Football races 56 yards. So Maglia's extra point is up and good. It is 7-3, Tennessee out in front. This offense made up their mind to run the football coming out. Eric Gray, 138 touchdowns in high school. Add another one to his college career. Eric Gray off. Big time play for Tennessee. Just like that, Alabama back out in front. Crimson Tide putting up some points. A lot of teams couldn't do this year against this Auburn defense. 24 points already in that first half. Who's playing quarterback? Mac? Brown. <laughs> Vanderbilt. Riley Neal is three for four for 10 yards, throwing the football. Keyshawn Vaughn, a couple of carries and no yards. Of course, first play of the game hurts his shoulder. 
And here's one guy we haven't talked about yet. Elijah Lipscomb. They have to find a way to get him acclimated into this offense. Neal with a bootleg. Throws on the run, and it is well behind Lipscomb. He was wide open. Pressure from Daryl Taylor kind of chasing Neal down, but Lipscomb was there. Yeah, you're right. He runs a simple over route, and he's wide open. They let him go, and he's trying to throttle down his space. He has to just throw this football after. He has plenty of nobody wow. around him. Just put it on him. And you got to give Vanny a little credit. Trying to throw the ball early on down. Jerry Gadaskin, offensive coordinator, had it drawn up perfectly, and you don't get the outcome you want. So now it's second down and 10. A little tap pass to Lipscomb. He's trying to outrace some folks to that sideline. Big collision on the outside with Elante Taylor. But he'll pick up six. And, and we just talked about it. Collage is the guy playing in this ball game. You talked about in the open day. He's made a bunch of plays in this series. And you see two back-to-back -back plays. They try to get him the football. Try to take a little pressure off the quarterback, a little pressure off Keyshawn Vaughn. But still brings up a third down here for Riley Neal in this offense. Bandy 0 for 3 on third downs. Coming near side with it. Keyshawn Vaughn slips through a tackle. He'll have the first down. It is amazing to me how many people just fall off of him on a simple carry. One of the more tough and physical runners out there. You see Devin Cocker, 77, left tackle, gets out, clears the way. And arm tackles are what he runs through. And you see that's a tough one to run through. Daniel Batuli, who's one of their top tacklers on defense. But Keyshawn Vaughn, it doesn't matter who you turn the tape on against. He's doing this versus everybody. First down and 10. Ball sits right at the 40-yard line. Keyshawn Vaughn. Not a whole lot of room between the tackles today for Keyshawn Vaughn. He'll lose a yard. There's just so much penetration for Tennessee. They're literally changing the line of scrimmage in the run game. That's why everything has been on the outside. Everything's been a perimeter throw, a perimeter run. And these linebackers are filling the gap so fast because of the penetration up front from the Tennessee D-line. Could be the last play of the first quarter. Neal steps up in that pocket, nowhere to go, and he'll be dropped. He loses a couple of yards. DeAndre Johnson there to make the play, and that'll be the final play of the first 15 minutes. Vanderbilt took an early interception. The result was three points. Tennessee answered back. Long touchdown run from Eric Gray. So Vanderbilt will have it third down. First play here of the second quarter inside Neyland Stadium. Riley Neal flushed down the pocket, and he is dropped back at the 27-yard line. A loss of eight on the play. Harrison getting the sack for the big orange. Yeah, he's going to come right off the bottom of your screen. He's right at the bottom of your screen here. Just does a good inside move. And just you're talking about motor and finishing and getting to the quarterback here. As Riley Neal steps up in the pocket trying to create something. And just running down there on third long, only rushing four for Tennessee. Big time play on third down. High snap through the hands of Harrison Smith. And he gets it away. What a play by Smith. That could have been disastrous. Instead, it goes down as an 18 yard punt. Give my man Smith a lot of credit right here. He could have went a bunch of different ways on here, but he kept his composure and still was able to get this football off and salvage what could have been, like you mentioned, a horrible situation for Vandy. Tennessee still with excellent field position at the 47-yard line. Garantano and company back on the field, leading 7-3. Here's Gray 
Had a 56-yard run for a touchdown, his first touchdown of the year. Picks up nine on that carry. The last drive was a different monster, and that's because they went to the ground game. Uh, absolutely. I was going to say the exact same thing. They came out trying to throw the football. Then they came out of two tight ends and said, offensive line, it's on you, and they started running the football, and that's when this offense opened up. Two tight end look. Well, old school football here, and Gray will have it to the 30 and a first down. Picks up eight more. Boy, this is a young man. We were just talking to Coach Pruitt about Eric Gray and what the future looks like with that young man. They're just like, you know, one more offseason in the weight room, understanding the offense, and he's got the tools. Obviously came in highly touted, a four-star running back. State record with 138 touchdowns in high school. Left side for Gray. This time, nowhere to go. Dangbo there to make the play. Let's get an update. Dari, what's going on in the Iron Bowl? <laughs> uh, nonetheless, uh, <laughs> what a half of football at Jordan Hare Stadium. Boy, Gray spins out of trouble, and he'll be dropped around the 26-yard line. 33 seconds, plenty of time for Auburn to do something. But you know what's more impressive about that is a minute to go, and they gave Mac Jones the opportunity to go down. Yeah. It was tied up, and that, that tells you what they feel about him is they're comfortable to allow him in that situation and go down and try to put something together, and they did. I wonder what it's like for Mac Jones last few weeks. He's the king right now. <laughs> a lot of pressure on him with him. He knew it going to Alabama. That's what it's going to be about. Third down here, pressure comes. Garantano trying to avoid trouble. Little shovel pass up ahead. Dominic Wood Anderson powering his way inside the 15, and flags come out as well. 13 yards, pressure came from Andre Mintz. And Garantano, heady play to get it to big number four. And the moxie here, watch it, watch Garantano, just understanding where his guys are. You see Dominic Wood Anderson, and I love the way he finished this run. Look at his tough, hard physical run. You see Tate Daly didn't like the way his guy got ran over, trying to get an extra hit on him, but it cost him. That'll move Tennessee inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. First and goal for Volunteers. The physicality has been turned up up front for Tennessee these last couple of series. Handoff goes to Tim Jordan. The one difference I've seen in Tennessee running the football in this game as opposed to some of their past is their ability to break some tackles. And Jim Chaney talked about that in our meeting yesterday. Is he said he looked at the rule book and said, hey, you guys can run more than eight yards. You know, you can break some tackles. <laughs> And in this ball game, we have seen them run hard, run physical. And Jim Chaney demands that out of his backs to play a little bit more physical in this game. There is Jim on the left of your screen. First year here. I shouldn't say for he's been here before, yeah. but after coming <laughs> from Georgia, his first year running this offense for Coach Jeremy Pruitt. Boy, what a hire that was. Garantano looking to the end zone and touchdown. Dominic Wood Anderson from six yards out. Other guys getting involved in this ball game. Dominic Wood Anderson after the big run he had from Garantano comes up with a big touchdown play. Tennessee's offense looks like the Tennessee offense we've seen the last few weeks. Brent Samaglia with the point after. 218 straight now by the Volunteers. Second longest streak in the NCAA, only behind the Georgia Bulldogs who came into today at 282. 
But Jarrett Garantano, after a slow start, starting to feel it here in Neyland Stadium. Balls up 14-3. Jarrett Garantano talking to his quarterback coach, Chris Winky, who knows a thing or two about the position, a former Heisman Trophy winner. And after a start that saw Garantano go 0 for 7, he is now uh, heated up here on a cool, I would say wet day in Knoxville on the banks of the Tennessee River. Garantano now has hit three in a row. A returnable kick, Shelton Mosley. Hit bounces off a couple of guys out to the 23 yard line and that's where the Commodores will take over down. First down and 10, Keyshawn Vaughn. Cuts it back, stumbles on the turf and he'll fall forward for a couple of yards. Keyshawn Vaughn, of course, if you're just joining us, hurt on the first carry of the game, hurt his shoulder, went into the tent, missed a, a series, came back into the game and has had a couple of nice runs, but just doesn't look like the same Keyshawn Vaughn we're used to seeing. Still 17 yards on those six carries. They'll run Vaughn again. No game. Don't forget, coming up 7.30 tonight. Good one, Florida State, Florida. Getting after it again. A win Saturday would give the Gators a second straight 10-win season for the first time since Dan Mullen's final year as offensive coordinator back in 2008. He also did it in 2009. But Florida State can play it much better under their interim head coach, Odell Higgins. It's amazing what the regime would do for the team, and they, they've had some Pretty positive wins the last couple of weeks. Bandy two out of six on third downs. They're looking at third and eight. Pressure comes up the middle. Riley Neal avoids one man, will throw on the run, and that one is incomplete. Pressure came from Daryl Taylor, their excellent pass rusher on the edge. Yeah, Darrell Taylor comes from the top of the, he comes from the top of the defense and rolls all the way back in from a stunt and puts the pressure on Riley Neal right here. You'll see him at the top of your screen here, come all the way around and loop in. Nobody's there and force Riley Neal outside the pocket a little bit sooner than he wanted to and really nothing there. Another high snap. Harrison Smith catches it and hits a boomer. Callaway backpedals to the 15. Will start forward around the 10. A flag comes in. A couple of flags will come in, and Callaway will be dropped. They'll spot his forward progress at the 17, but a 57 yard punt. There is Derek Mason now in his sixth year as the head coach, 27 and 46, but been to a bowl game two of the last three years, and only two guys have ever taken. A Vanderbilt team, the multiple bowl games, he and James Franklin in that club. But I'll tell you what, for much of the season, Derek Mason was answering a lot of questions about job security. And we were there for the win over Missouri. And the emotion after that game was certainly quite intense. But his athletic director, who's new on the job, Malcolm Turner, came out a few weeks ago and said that Derek Mason's our coach moving forward. Handoff to Gray. There he goes in the open field. He's got a long way to go. To the 20. To the 10. Give him six. 94 yards. Hundred and seventy one yards rushing for the true freshman.
Point after is good. Eric Gray came in with 207 yards rushing all season. Now with 171. A 94 yarder, a 56 yarder, and this is the last one right here. Get used to seeing number three, folks. Tennessee has rushed for 200 yards, already 69 yards more than they're accustomed to with a lot of football left to be played. Eric Gray just went 94 yards, the second longest touchdown run in Tennessee history. Kelsey Finch went 99 against Florida back in 1977. This young man knows how to get it to the end zone. 138 touchdowns in high school was a state record here in the state of Tennessee. The three time Tennessee Mr. Football. Shelton Mosley runs into his own guy and now has been tossed to the turf by Kenneth George on the special teams tackle. You ever had on a turkey outfit, Dave? You know, it was Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, if they would do that, like, say, next week, then we got issues. <laughs> It was Thanksgiving. Did you have on a turkey outfit on Thanksgiving? No. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I haven't in the past. Just this, <laughs> just this year I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Riley Neal will throw it out of bounds. That'll yeah. bring up a third down. Pressure came from Matthew Butler. Yeah, surprise. Vandy's even throwing the football where they're at on the football field down 18 before half. I'm thinking they may want to get out of this half without anything else happening. Throw it near side, caught by Cam Johnson. That was a gain of 13. See if that is the final play of the half, and they will say it is. So Tennessee behind two long runs from their true freshman, Eric Gray, of 56 and 94 yards. Lead it. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Pride of the Southland Band. On SEC Network Plus, you can start streaming that now on the ESPN app. Let's go down to Dawn. Well, Coach Pruitt, things started to click offensively for you guys on the ground. What allowed Eric Gray to have so much success that half? Yeah, you know, we, we finally started running the football, and the guys done a nice job up front, and, and Eric did a couple of runs. On the other side of the ball, you hold them to just three points. What do you point out to your defense that's been working? Well, we're keeping them in front of us, eliminating explosive plays and getting off the field on third down. Thank you, Coach Pruitt. Thank you. I think that's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. 21-3, <laughs> Tennessee out in front. Volunteers trying to snap a Vanderbilt three-game win streak in this rivalry. With that, we'll get it to the studio. Dari, it's all yours. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 21-3, moments away from second-half football. Here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Dave Neal alongside the quarterback, D.J. Shockley, and Vanderbilt's won five of seven, three in a row over Tennessee in this rivalry that dates back to 1892, but Tennessee's playing a little differently than we've seen in the past. It's an attitude. I mean, yeah. on both sides of the ball, it turned into who can be more physical. I think both line of scrimmage have been controlled and dominated by Tennessee and ultimately they don't want to make this streak go to four. <laughs> yes, and they've turned to a true freshman running back that's kind of created some of this separation in the first half. Eric Gray with three long or two long touchdown runs. Yeah, you talk about this double team here. Watch this double team. Trey Smith gets up to that next linebacker and creates that hole for Gray to run through. It's been fun to watch this offensive line. And on the other side, Jerome Carvin. This is another instance of getting to the second level. Blocking these linebackers is what they have missed and is creating this gap scheme run for Tennessee. And we see Eric Gray, once he gets any kind of seam with that speed, he has gone the distance multiple times. What a half for Eric Gray. Came in with just over 200 yards rushing on the year and has 171 
excuse me, 181 yards in that first half. For the Vanderbilt side of things, let's go down to Don Davenport. Well, Dave, not good news for Vanderbilt. Keyshawn Vaughn, the running back, is out because of that shoulder injury he suffered early in this game. Head coach Derek Mason telling me it was his decision to pull him for his future, for his health. Keyshawn Vaughn wanted to keep playing in this ball game. Derek Mason said, no, you are done. On the other side of the ball, defensively, Derek Mason said they have got to fit the run game better. He said two long runs are basically the problem here because of miscommunication and bad fits and his message guys to his team it's 2019 we've got 30 minutes left go get it Riley Neal will throw it and that one is deflected it's incomplete in the first half Vanderbilt's offense 31 plays 89 yards of offense and that would have went a long way to get some of those yards up there was nobody on the other side of the field with Kalaja Lifko there, he would have been running oh. for a very long time. Four of his offensive linemen were out there. It is unbelievable. Tennessee really looked up on this one here. Look at look how many guys are outside oh, the hash. He would have been running for a very long time. Wow. Second down and ten, though. No. So here's the freshman on the other side. Leon Brooks. He'll take it out to the 34 yard line, nine yard pickup for Brooks, who now will get the majority of the carries. It's really been a two man show in the backfield for Vanderbilt this year with Vaughn and Brooks. Brooks came in with just 43 carries. Keyshawn Vaughn had 192 entering his final regular season Saturday. And this clear is an audition for Brooks to be the number one guy next year. He's going to get a bulk of the load here in this second half. And see if he can carry it for this Vanderbilt Commonwealth offense. Third down and short. They give it to Brooks. They're going to spot it right at the 35, which will be good enough to move the chains. So Brooks getting his nose in there. Just enough to move the sticks. Well, again, Riley Neal, you look at it, 10 out of 18. Not horrible, no interceptions, right? But it's just that it, there's just no movement in the pass game. Yeah, there's been some inconsistent throws. He's had some guys open at times and haven't hit him. That could extend the drives. He just has to be a little bit more consistent throwing the ball, which will back this Tennessee defense up just a little bit. Neal will play fake by some time. And, well, that's the second time that we've seen him roll right and just not be able to throw an accurate ball. I'm just not sure what he's seeing or how he's throwing his football. I mean, this is a wide open guy in the flat that he should hit and should be an easy completion here. He does a good job of escaping on the outside. Now just give it to the tight end here and he throws it behind him. Just those are the ones that make you shake your head and, and say, what is the problem? Right. Has to make a better throw. And it's that roll to the right that's been the problem which you would think would be the easier side to throw to. And then he air mails Lipscomb. This is all confidence now. I mean, this is pitch and catch. This is what you do when you, you're trying to get warmed up for the ball game and you're just throwing it back and forth with your, your teammate and just completely air mails it to collage Lipscomb. And even if he catches that football, doesn't have an opportunity. You see him patting himself on the chest, but it's getting late in this ball game already. You got to have those type of throws. And here's another opportunity. He's got to do it on third down. And look, he's completed a lot of passes in his career. He's closing in on 9,000 career passing yards. And he airmails that one into the Vanderbilt bench. Looking for Cam Johnson. It's three straight throws that were not confident throws. And you watch it. He's out of sorts a little bit. And you can see he's probably thinking how do I get on tack how do I get on 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 rhythm and those three throws are just not conducive to a quarterback playing at a high level especially in the SEC here do you think about making a change Smith will punt it away Callaway watches it sail out of bounds again Garantano started 0 for 7 Jarrett now 
three out of 11 for just 26 yards. What a stark difference from last week where through for 415 <laughs> yards to this week, only three of 11. Run it again. Here's Gray, the hot hand. It'll fall out close to the 30, give him six yards, tripped up there. There's an instance there where Vandy was actually in the right spot. Linebacker came up and filled the gap, but Eric Gray makes a guy miss in that hole to pick up that first down. Vandy has to do a better job of tackling now. Don talked about the communication and misfitting. Well, they fit well that time. Now you have to make the play. Straight handoff here. Gray breaking a tackle, breaks another one. He's out to the 45-yard line. Dragged down there by Deshaun Jerkins. 17 more yards. Talked a lot about Trey Smith. Watch him get up here on the second level, get to this linebacker, and seal it for Eric Gray. That is the probably most important block on that particular play is sealing that backside and allowing Gray to get to the front side of the run and another explosive run for Tennessee. Gray now 203 yards rushing, averaging 15 and a half yards a pop. Man, what a day for the true freshman. Working the left side is Gray behind this offensive line, led by Trey Smith. For more on that, let's go down to Dawn. Dave, Trey Smith, so fun to watch. I asked him, what's the greatest part of this game that keeps him coming back, that keeps him fighting to stay on the field? He said, there is no greater feeling than moving someone from point A to point B. That's exactly what he's doing today. Goodness. And, and Dawn, we've been watching him since the first snap, and he's limping around. You know, he got hurt in pregames. We saw some of that earlier. Limp back into the tunnel while the team was running through. Well, some if, he's, plays. if he's 100%, goodness gracious, right. he's the one that's limping around. Right. If he's at like 75, imagine <laughs> him at 100. Working the right side. Gray to the block T. <laughs> Gained six more, but this was what happened pregame with the big fella. Just warm up plays, and you could tell something was amiss when he got up, and there goes the mouthpiece, and he went straight into the locker room. And he has had a little bit of that limp since we started this game, but he has been in there every play. I'll be honest, he's earning a lot of money today, the way he's playing, the way he's moving. Eric Gray in at that wildcat position, and he'll take it off the left side, trying to get a couple of yards, but Vandy stuffed it. No gain on the play. Cameron did, and Elijah McAllister combined for that tackle. Setting the edge, and then the penetration here is what dominates this play here. Watch them set the edge on the outside right there. Set the edge and force everything back inside and allow your big guys from the inside of your defense to penetrate and make that play. What a... Outstanding job for Bandy getting off the field there on third and short. So fourth down and two. Paxton Brooks will punt it away to Justice Shelton Mosley. High end over end kick. That will hit around the five and it'll be down by Tennessee inside the 10 so Vanderbilt backed up their offense has been stuck in this Knoxville mud will there be a change of quarterback stay with us well Riley Neal coming back out for this series the numbers 10 of 21 59 yards and the last few passes just haven't been very pretty. Yeah, he struggled throwing the football. They're throwing in the double coverage. It just tells you he's not seeing the field well. And then you have throws that should be confident throws where you're throwing in the backyard with your, your brother. And he has air melt a few. He hasn't been himself, but he's still got a lot of football left to play in this ball game and try to turn it around. Pressure comes. And Riley will pick up substantial yardage, seven yards before he's brought down by Greg Emerson. So It'll be second down and about three, maybe three and a half. The backup quarterback situation for Vanderbilt. Deuce Wallace, number two on the right of your screen there, is your backup. 
Alan Walters, who's played a little bit this year, is third on that list. Mo Hassan, who got the start against Missouri, but was hit by a late, blatant targeting yeah. hit by Vanderbilt, I mean by Missouri. Good, good, Hasn't good, played since. Good chance to run a screen or something to help him. They'll run it with Brooks, and they'll spot him near the 20, so he'll have the first down. You look at Raleigh Neal, he, he like he was a little bit out of sorts after that last run. I think a really good call to run the football there, but he was wheezing a little bit as he was starting to go back into the huddle. <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter. Right where we started the third quarter, 21 to 3. Ah, that, that is a great finish, especially coming off that loss to Florida State. Tough test against VCU and Lamonte Turner step it up over the middle to Bresnahan. Big reception there, biggest gainer of the day for Vanderbilt out over the 35. That's 26 yards. Just watch Riley Neal rip this football here. This is what a confident quarterback looks like throwing the football. Play action, linebackers up, throwing a strike right down the seam. That's a confident throw. More of that needs to happen here in the fourth quarter if Van is going to have any chance. Any chance of getting back into this? Vanderbilt with 157 total yards. They'll add to that. Brooks, big run into Tennessee territory. He's down to the ball's 45. That's 19 more ripped off there by the freshman. Now, this is what happen when good things happen to you. You talk about Tennessee getting to the next level. Their center, Sean McMore, does a really good job getting to that second level as well, creating that play. Pass caught on the outside by Cam Johnson. He'll pick up 10 more. That'll be a first down. Only three big plays, but a flag is down on the near side of the field away from where the tackle was made. Illegal substitution on the defense, but penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Clearly the best drive of the day right now for Vanderbilt. Yeah, and it's been because of some confident throws. That little simple throw that looked like was thrown out to the flat right there. That's something we've seen in this ball game be air mailed by Raleigh Neal. Two good throws on this drive have really helped him get going. First down and 10. A little double reverse and a pass off of it. If Neal can let it go, he'll sling it out of bounds. Tennessee all over it. Give Tennessee a lot of credit on this. Look on the back end. There's really nowhere to go with this football. They do a good job of staying home. Safety gets over the top. They do a good job of he's going to be crashing down here. Just nowhere to go with the football for Riley Neal and throws it away smartly. Second down and 10. Tennessee bringing five, and Neal just throws it away. It'll be incomplete, and it'll bring up third down and ten. And you see the change of the guard after Riley Neal completes a couple passes. He's kind of comfortable inside the pocket. Tennessee says, no, no, no. We're going to start to bring pressure and get this football out of your hands right now. I expect the same thing here on third down as they have pressured six times in this ball game on Riley Neal. Neal flushed out of the pocket, nowhere to go. He'll be hit at the 30 and thrown out of bounds. Picks up four, kind of in that no man's land. Maybe you go for it on fourth down, down 18. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I don't think you have much choice. So you have to go for it. This has probably been your most successful drive. You move the football down the field. And this is fourth and manageable here. You got an opportunity to throw the football here and pick it up. But you got to be conscious if you're Tennessee of Riley Neal using his legs here because he has gotten outside a couple times and picked up first downs with his legs.
Neal. He's going to try to run for it. He'll have it down to the 20 yard line. And instead of bringing the blitz, Tennessee rushes three and drops eight. Only rush three. Now you have an opportunity to see, and nothing downfield. Take off. You only need five yards. Just talked about Riley Neal using his leg to pick up a first down, and he does it there. Seven plays, 70 yards on this drive. They'll hand it off to Brooks. He'll get it down to around the 17. Toa Toa with the tackle there. Henry with three tackles today, the true freshman. A lot to like about this young man. Of course, losing Daniel Patuli, who's going to be the next tackle machine. And he's it. A lot of people point to number 11 there. Yeah, he's got 10 starts this, this season. and. Just the instincts you love. I mean, he can see things happening, watch him on tape. Very athletic kid, and he's going to be fun to watch for the next few years. Second down, bringing four. Neal throws as he is dragged to the turf, incomplete. Tried to get it to Brooks. Bennett was there, just missed out on the sack. You can say this stuff. Look at this. Just, just scrapping and fighting, trying to get to Neal and get Riley a lot of credit there as well. Get rid of that football, not taking a sack to force him to a, a manageable third down here. I think we're in four down territory, so this third down call may be dictated on you knowing you're going for it on fourth down. Third and a dozen. Going toward the end zone, and this one is caught. What a catch by Lipscomb. Give him the touchdown. 22 yards. How did that get through Elante Taylor's hands? Riley Neal putting it in a spot. Only he can get to it and just off the hands. Oh, let's see, tell you, look at it. Oh, he's in. Got both feet in, actually looks like. Got one in for sure. But good concentration there, and what a drive for that young man right there. Made some key clutch throws and some big moments. And when you need the most, your senior, Kalijah Lifton, comes up with a big catch. Point after, up and good. Kalijah Lipscomb, they had the big three. But they're down to the big one. And the big one made it count. <laughs> Going up for it, giving him a chance. That's all he can ask for. Your big time playmaker collides the list and cuts the lead for Vandy. Vanderbilt down 11 after the Kalijah Lipscomb 22 yard touchdown reception. The big three down to the big one. First down and 10 for Tennessee. By the way, I got a number on this Alabama thing I'm still scratching my head on. When they score 40 points in the history of their football program, they are 242 and two. Whoa. Whoa. They trail right now 48 to 45. So what you're saying is Alabama's gonna win the game somehow, some way. I mean, it's. That's on a real number. It, it, 242 and two. <laughs> <laughs> Garantano. Callaway with his first catch. He didn't want to go down, but they'll spot him at the 49, 19 yard pickup. Love the play action. Similar we talked about in the open on the backside dig. Watch him stemming up vertical and then stick that foot in the ground and go flat across the field. That is a really good route. Ran there by Callaway. Standing there and throw the rock. That is an impressive play there off play action. Yep. All 11 guys doing what they're supposed to do, and it looks like that. Let's get another update. Dari, what's going on? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's so rare. LSU scored? That is 
Well, I, something tells me they're going to try to put up about 70 on A&M today after what happened last year. You mean that you think they still remember seven overtimes? You think they remember that? <laughs> Eric Gray will move to the right side of Garantano. They'll fake it that way. A little shoulder fake by Garantano. And underneath route is caught for a first down. They're going to say incomplete. Incomplete. Trying to hit Dominic Wood Anderson on the low throw. Yeah, this one was on JT. He had a wide open Dominic Wood Anderson here. Has to make a better throw as he's trying to come back for it. Tough to see if he gets both hands under from there. His final game here at Neyland Stadium for the junior college transfer. Anderson has three catches and a touchdown today. Garantano over the middle, wide open is Jawan Jennings. Jawan breaks the tackle, slips another one. Jawan to the 10, trying to get it to the end zone, but he'll get it inside the five. It'll be first and goal for the Volunteers. This is where the size again comes in play. Jalen Mahoney wants to get pressure on him. You see Derek wait on him and deliver a strike to him, but you saw Mahoney behind him fall down because he tries to get physical with a ref, trying to get his hands on him, and Jennings just swipes it down, that big physical frame of his. 6'3", 208, and Mahoney's standing only 5'11", 180. And then the yards after catch is where he has been dangerous this season. Well, maybe that'll make him happy. <laughs> Take the frustrated look off him. Loose football. Who's got it? Hang on to it. Tennessee comes up with it. Bavaria's crouch. It's been coming in in short yardage type situations. Let's see what happens here between the quarterback. Oh, yeah, he lost it. He put it in the pocket and he's trying to change hands with it. Crouch, he plays linebacker as well. Had a rushing touchdown last week against Missouri. Eric Gray, your tailback. They line up in that eye formation. He'll toss it to Gray, working left side. Gets a couple of great blocks. Untouched into the end zone. His third touchdown of the day, and now has 233 yards on the ground. Here comes Toss Crack, seal the edge, Gary by Gray to get around the corner. It's an easy walk-in touchdown. Receivers on the outside blocking. Total team effort there to get him in the end zone. Point after is up and good. So Eric Gray now has the true freshman rushing record here at Tennessee, surpassing Jamal Lewis, 232 yards back in 1997 against the University of Georgia. Everybody being asked to leave the stadium. Lightning within eight miles of Neyland Stadium here late in the fourth quarter. 28-10. Volunteers out in front after that touchdown by Eric Gray, his third of the day. But what that lightning means is that it's at least 30 minutes before anybody can get back on the field and we resume play. So there will be a break in the action here. We are just a few moments away from resuming play. 7.38 to go in the fourth quarter. Tennessee and Vanderbilt uh, had a Delays before the game, 30 minutes. Now one toward the end, but uh, Tennessee just put it in the end zone to take a 28-10 lead. Obviously, there's still some football left to be played from a mental standpoint. Where does this put you as a player? It's tough to come back after a couple times you've been in the locker room, having to rewarm up again and get your body back ready to play again. So mentally, you got to try to finish this last seven minutes out and try to get out of here for both sides, really.
Well, certainly uh, this game started with Vanderbilt picking up an interception on Tennessee's first drive. Result was a three-pointer on the board, but then Tennessee scored uh, 21 straight and led it 21 to three at the end of two quarters. Led it 21 to three at the end of three quarters. But both teams have scored a touchdown. But the story's been Eric Gray as he has rushed for a true freshman rushing record of 233 yards today. And there is a look and maybe a new quarterback on the way for Vanderbilt. Deuce Wallace wearing number two with his helmet on as Tennessee scored right before the weather delay, so they will kick it off. But there was a penalty on the extra point that pushes it to the 50-yard line, and that is where the Volunteers will kick it away, and that will sail through the end zone. And Dawn Davenport's down on the sideline. She caught up with Jeremy Pruitt, uh, Pruitt a little while ago. What did he have to say? Yeah, I asked him what they did during that rain delay, and he said, well, we kept coaching the kids up, of course. If there's time to talk to them, time to teach them, this coaching staff is going to do that. I said, what was your message to your kids after this rain delay? And he said, I told them we have seven and a half minutes to play. This better be the best seven and a half minutes of football that we've played all season long. And Deuce Wallace will come in and be the quarterback for Vanderbilt. Deuce Wallace, the redshirt junior out of Sevierville, Tennessee, handed off to Brooks, who breaks a tackle, and he'll take it to the 30-yard line, a gain of five on the play. But Tooley with another tackle, his eighth today. But there's Deuce Wallace, his numbers, 42% completion percentage. But the four interceptions is what will worry you if you're a coach. There's Riley Neal, who got the start today, 14 of 29, 139, and a touchdown. Ooh, Brooks, a nice little stutter step, and first down there for the uh, for the Commodores after a gain of seven. So yeah, I've been impressed with Brooks in this ball game. Even when Keyshawn Ball was in the game, he came in and added a different spark, and he's been kind of that guy they're going to look to next year to kind of carry the load and take over for Keyshawn Ball. Wallace batted in the air, and that'll be incomplete. You're taught as a defensive lineman. You can't get to the quarterback. Just get your hands up in the air. You see right there at the last moment, Matthew Butler gets his hand up and deflects that football. Good job of pushing the pocket, but then getting that hand up when you couldn't get all the way there. Second down and 20. Wallace looking for some room and will throw it near side. That one's incomplete. Trying to hit Cam Johnson. Now it's third down and 20. Jerry Godowski telling Riley Neela this is the play. Godowski, the offensive coordinator. Not a whole lot of third and 20s no. on that play sheet. I don't remember any when I played that were in part of our, our offense. What an opportunity for a guy to make a play and try to make a guy miss and pick up a first down here if you can. Four-man rush, gets it to Brooks. Long way to go, and he'll be pushed out of bounds around the 37, well shy of the line to gain. So a fourth down situation here for Vanderbilt. Tennessee only end up rushing four. Darrell Taylor, number 19, did a really good job of spin move and trying to get that pressure, forcing that ball out of the hands of Deuce Wallace a little bit quicker than he wanted to. So Tennessee will have it. Excellent field position as that one sails out of bounds. For Jarrett, the red shirt junior. So many guys we've seen kind of lose confidence. I don't want to say give up, but maybe not the same kind of, they don't have to harden it when things happen like happened to him this year. But he has never lost faith. He's put his mind, heart, soul into this. He loves Knoxville, says he's a Tennessee ball forever. Jeremy Pruitt even said he's a winner. I said when it went with him, the other quarterbacks, that he'd help us win some games, and he did last week for sure. 
Even his teammates, though, have stuck by him, including his fellow quarterback, Brian Maurer, who said some really nice things about him, and Trey Smith, the offensive lineman. I mean, there's one thing about that locker room. They have his back. And that's uh, probably the best thing about this whole situation is his teammates still believe in him. They know what he's about. Well, run it left side. Gray throwing to the ground. We've seen some of Garantano's arm strength today, which has been pretty impressive. Do you know what's more impressive, DJ? What you did yesterday. This is what it looked like, folks. Off one knee, my man, who hadn't thrown the ball in a while now, 52 <laughs> yards <laughs> off of one knee. I was very, oh, how about this? Finish it off, Dave. Come on. Look at the, look at the motion, the crow hop. I threw it at least 27 right there <laughs> with a crow hop. I gave you 35. <laughs> I, I gave you 35, <laughs> man. Uh, it's all about the finish. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't know that part was in there. <laughs> DJ, I never doubted you for the record. I know. Never they doubted, doubted you. For oh, a I did. I, I, I didn't think there was any chance. <laughs> Don, I appreciate that. Let me, it, it, you, let me say this. You made it look effortless. I was surprised. <laughs> you talking about me, Don? Are you talking about me or <laughs> you Dave? Right. Dave, come on. Let's let's be honest. You know you went back to the hotel, wrapped the ice around oh, the did. shoulder. Well, that's because I had that workout yesterday in the Tennessee weight room. That's, that's, true. True. that's true. You put up about 25 Golly. reps. Lee. Coach Fitzgerald, the strength and training coach here, strength and conditioning coach here at Tennessee, just kept putting those weights on for, for Dave to do a little chest press. <laughs> To say I'm a little sore today would be an understatement. <laughs> you did it all while talking. <laughs> Shelton Mosley. Almost intercepted. Trying to hit Bresnahan, the tight end. As the rain continues to drive down. Mm. Just not sure what he got from that. Just not sure yeah. why that would make you feel that kind of way to when go out that way. <laughs> Deuce Wallace will try to run for it, and he'll slide down inside the 30 at the 29, a gain of six. And Derek Mason wanted to finish this season off the right way, said this was their 2019 bowl game and wanted to end it with an exclamation point. Loose football, and I think Tennessee just came up with it. Or they lose it in the scrum? It looked like Tennessee had an easy chance to fall on it, but Vanderbilt came out of there with it. Yeah, I'm not even sure this ball came off the ground. Yeah, it, it looked like he thought maybe he was under center because that ball didn't go more than two yards. 
Grant Miller ends up falling on. It's the second time he's recovered a fumble today. Wallace will throw. Looking for Johnson. That one's incomplete. And that will turn it over on downs with 43 seconds to play. Well, there is Jared Pinckney, who did not play today, hurt during practice this week. Elijah Lipscomb was the only one of the big three able to finish this game out. Keyshawn Vaughn hurt on the first rush of the game. Played a little bit longer, but obviously was not the same Keyshawn Vaughn. But Tennessee's going to snap this Vanderbilt three-game win streak. Mandy had won five of the last seven. And that should be the final play of the game as Jeremy Pruitt making the way across the field. Shake hands with Derek Mason as this one's in the books. And Tennessee has won five in a row. Six of their last seven. And they will go to seven and five on the year. What a turnaround for Tennessee. Eric Gray with a huge day. 246 yards rushing. He averaged just shy of 10 yards a carry, three touchdowns. Came in with 207 yards rushing through the first 11 games. Garantano, six of 17, 120. As Tennessee put up 417 yards of offense, 297 on the ground. Held the football for 36 minutes. For DJ Shockley, Don Davenport, the rest of our exceptional crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Neyland Stadium.